Africa, South Africa's new dawn currently uh, in spotlight after those economic numbers that we saw yesterday. First quarter GDP are uh, reflecting a 2.2% contraction of the economy, weighed down by agriculture, mining and manufacturing. On the line, I have Kevin Lins, Chief Economist at Stanley. Kevin, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining me today. So, the rand down more than a percent again today after those DB numbers. Why is the market marking that currency so heavily? Is it in part, perhaps, a failure of you guys to correctly anticipate this contraction? I think the market is reacting to the fact that uh, it was such a disappointing GDP outcome. Remember that uh, the general feeling was, yes, it might be a bit weak, but not as weak as minus 2%. Uh, and, and I guess that uh, we've been anticipating, because of the change in politics, that confidence has improved and that the economy should be getting into better shape uh, this number suggests uh, quite the opposite, that uh, the weakness was fairly broad-based, that uh, it's not just mining and manufacturing, uh, it's an agriculture, it included retail activities, so some of the service sectors under pressure, uh, it included the construction industry, so this was broad-based weakness and I think it has startled people in terms of what they were anticipating would develop in this country. How far were you out, Kevin, on those numbers? So we had expected a, a modest uh, decline of 0.8% uh, versus what uh, materialized as minus 2.2. Now, that is, from our perspective, a, a significant miss. In other words, uh, yes, uh, you could see that the data was weak and that obviously we get some monthly data uh, ahead of this. So we know we got an indication as to how the economy is performing. Uh, but. Uh, none of the data suggested to us that it would be as weak as minus 2%. And the reason, I think, is that obviously there's some of the sectors where we don't obtain uh, monthly data, so we don't quite know how things are developing month by month. And uh, given how broad the slowdown was in South Africa, uh, it definitely caught, I think, most economists by surprise. So, Kevin, are you amongst those that have been seriously revising your numbers downwards? This morning so we had a growth uh, estimate at the beginning of this year of one and a half percent for South Africa we've taken that down to 1.3 percent so it's not a massive downward revision um, I think you will see bigger downward revisions uh, by other people where uh, there was a higher degree of optimism that the growth rate could be as much as two percent or even higher than that so I think this is a reality check and I just need to stress that even if you're forecasting growth of, let's say, one and a half for this year, yeah. uh, it means that the economy has to accelerate very significantly in the second half of the year in order to make just one and a half percent. So it's not as if it's going to be easy to achieve that. We have to have a meaningful pickup in activity across yeah. a number of sectors uh, in order to achieve just modest growth for the year. Yeah, and of course we're talking about uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and the three months that he has been in office and the impact that we expected him to have, which perhaps hasn't started feeding in through yet. To what extent do you think he'll be able to, m to, to, to have a bigger impact? Number one, given the messaging that he has given since the beginning of the year, and also now taking into consideration that next year he's going into an election year and he needs to be saying things uh, to different constituencies that will potentially impact the, the, the level of uh, economic activity. That's exactly right. I think it's a difficult environment for Cyril because of the political backdrop. It's not easy for him to message consistently on, say, improving business confidence. There are many other factors he's got to be looking at. And so I think it's going to be difficult for him to meaningfully lift the growth rate ahead of uh, next year's election. Obviously, generally in an election year, the economy does actually tend to do a little bit better because there are a whole lot of uh, spending that's going on related to the p political campaigning. But I think it's going to be difficult to get that pick up. Uh, we're hoping that uh, there is a further move on some of the outstanding policy issues, uh, like the mining charter. We need to resolve what is the content of the mining charter. Obviously, the land debate uh, remains, and we're hoping to see some progress on that. And then broader than that, uh, we obviously have to see that the SOE sectors are moving into better shape, that the management of state-owned enterprises is yielding a better outcome. So there are a number of focal areas, and 
I guess what you're hoping is that if you can show improvement in policy and you can show improvement in SOEs, that the business sector would start to respond positively to that environment and maybe start to expand uh, by some maintenance capex, some renewal expansion, not necessarily yeah. building capacity, but simply upgrading the machinery and equipment they've got. And that would help us quite a bit in terms of growth. Yeah. The area I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about is the global trade environment because the, the current global trade wars that seem to be unfolding uh, between the US, Europe and China has the ability to slow down global trade and, and we could see in the first quarter that our exports came under very significant pressure. So it's not going to be helpful if, world, if the world trade is slowing somewhat. So I think it's a, it's a significant challenge ahead for South Africa. I think what we're going to end up having to conclude is that we've got to be realistic about the type of turnaround South Africa can achieve. I think it's possible to achieve something of 4%, 5% on a five-year view. But over the next year or two, it's going to be difficult to lift South Africa's growth rate even up to 2% and beyond that. And what you're giving me, Kevin, does not give me any hope at all that we're likely to see the rating agencies looking favorably on South Africa and helping to lift the burden by perhaps uh, raising the uh, investment rating of the country. So if you look at the ratings, we're actually fortunate uh, in a strange way that they've just done their rating review uh, before the GDP number came out because obviously, uh, particularly for Standard & Poor's, this would have been a, a, a difficult number yeah. to then hold the rating unchanged. And I guess all the rating agencies have flagged that South Africa needs to lift its growth rate meaningfully. So it's a critical factor and it's going to take time for South Africa to lift the growth rate to the point where the rating agencies decide, yes, let's upgrade the credit rating. So I think it's another reminder that we locked into the current credit ratings for a considerable period. I certainly don't think that we are at risk of a credit rating downgrade. I think there's enough evidence to show that we've made significant political changes and that confidence should be getting better. But it does highlight the importance of focusing not just on, on how we improve the social dynamics, how we improve the SOE sector, etc. But we also got to focus on how do we lift economic growth? How do we create jobs in South Africa? And I think what this GDP number does is it highlights that. Uh, the rating agencies have been highlighting that for some time, but I think this number brings it home. And so I think ho I'm hoping that we're going to see a renewed focus on a discussion around uh, how do we get out of this growth uh, debacle.